Yo, oh, hey, welcome to another edition of Hand Laid Tracks and 3D Printed Trains with Socrates. Today we're taking a second look at the 12 inch tangential curved track. It's not exactly a number four turnout, it's I think around a four and a half, but what it is is a 12 inch curve running with a tangential diverging curve, depending on which way you want to look at it. It's a straight path with a 12 inch constant curve coming off of it. This is a second version. The first version was a little bit more geometrically perfect, but the join up place on the diverging rail seemed to be not as perfect for the trains. Uh, the one I made didn't really work as well, so what I did is I moved the throw bar that way two ties and basically rebuilt the small amount of the jig that I had to and reprinted everything and then I made a second version which works a lot better. Interestingly the other version, this is a left, the right hand version is the first version and that worked okay so maybe just something I made in the version I made didn't work not just not sure for uh, exactly what the problem was but in the end I ended up with two turnouts and that's what I needed it's a very small layout so I don't need much each one is essentially bespoke and here's a quick video of me building it out if you've seen them before it's the same process again building a turnout is essentially the same thing so four sets of rails stock rails frog rails diverging rails and guard rails Cut them up, shape them up, solder them in, boom, turnout. Take a look if you like, like it, and uh, I'll be putting these things up on Thingiverse, I think, still. And if you want to download them, you can build yourself a 12 inch, 12 inch curve for if it fits your track, it fit my track. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check it out. So we start with our tool zoom in. Again, this time I'm replacing a previous piece of track work, so that's the original one I made. And you can see that the throw bar is just a little bit to the left. Uh, the new one is to the right if you prefer. So again, I'm just marking off the, the rails. In this case, the stock rails have an interesting curve because it's very straight and then it suddenly takes a 12 inch radius. So I left a, a large piece of straight and then I curved it with the rail roller to get the curved part to a 12 inch radius. After the uh, stock rails it were basically cut out and the, the, the diverging rails, one straight and one is another 12 inch piece of stock rail that I've already uh, already rolled out to the proper radius then it's time to cut ties and gap ties and if you have done this yourself individually you know this is a really difficult uh, tedious task so I built these particular little jigs you slide the uh, ties in basically nip them off from the the container I'm using fast tracks ties fi file both ends of the second and the cut end and then you slip it in the, the jig snip it reverse it to the other cut end is in deep snip it again fill the jig up, file the tops off flush, and you transfer them from the one jig to the second jig, and then hit it with the triangular triangle file to put the gap in, then move usually four of the ties over to the secondary jig, and that cuts the second gap for the diverging rail and the third gap for that one tie that's just after the frog. And that is the hardest gap to put in the right place, that's why I started doing this particular jig solution in the first place. And as you can see, then you have to hit it with one last piece of the uh, file before you put them on so the surface is nice and shiny. But you can see the gaps, they line up really well. And to me, this was a massive, massive pain to do it manually. And I really, really like this particular jig that I designed and built myself. Good job, me. Anyway, they're available on Thingiverse. So it depends on the, on the turnout, though. They're sort of specific for the turnout. And uh, once you've got them filled with all your nicely gapped and cut ties it's time to start adding the stock rails and again I've already pre-cut the stock rails each of the rail has a small filed end on it uh, the stock rails have sort of a notch where the diverging rail pockets into it the diverging rails always have all have that same pocketed end sort of almost filed in half the frogs have an angle filed into them so they meet together and the guard rails all have little bends on them and little files on the ends as well so each of those eight pieces of rail all have to be pre you know uh, filed on pre set up prior to being uh, soldered in here I'm doing the diverging rail again it starts with a piece of already curved stock rail in this case 12 inches and set it into the jig and it has a little mark where you nip off the end or nip off one of the webs and then you can kind of bend it so it fits it forms a guard rail around the frog and once it's cut to length you go ahead and sort of make a nice little edge file off where the uh, to keep the, the wheels encouraging them to go in the right place 
I think it's one of the nicest things about the handmade tracks is that you get to put that little tiny edge into it. And some of these filings I'm doing off screen because I have a box that I file my little bits of metal into as opposed to on the desk. And uh, once that rail is mostly fit in, go ahead and move to the second rail, which is a little bit easier because this case it's just a straight, straight track rail because it's essentially a straight a tangential path. Nip the webbing, bend the piece, cut it to approximate length, make sure the length is right, file that little corner off of it so it has a nice guide for the wheels to come in. And now you've got the majority of your turnout done, at least the two diverging rails. Uh, the frog is the, the next set of rails that has to be done. And uh, here what I'm doing is the, the thin end of the diverging rail, when it goes into the pocket, I still find it's a little bit thick. So I file that top rail down to essentially to a point and it, it fits nicer. Because when you run your finger along the stock rail, you shouldn't hardly tell that you've taken the path, the turning path. And so that was my last little bit of adjustment. And now I'm getting the uh, um, guardrails set up here. I don't think I've done the frog rails or the frogs yet, but this particular print I was doing it, uh, I was making a new frog jig. So I sort of was banging through parts of it getting everything I did, could get done while the jig itself was, was printing because some of these things take a few hours and this is bending the, the guard rails I left them a little long because I didn't see any reason not to again it's my own design so I can do with it as I choose I still use the fast tracks jig to bend them it's just an easier way to do it because it has a nice little powerful channel you can use one of the plastic jigs of course but I have the jig I might as well use it same way I use the point and uh, frog cutting tools as weights I still use the stock rail as a stock rail cutter, but other than that, I, for frogs and points, I use my own tools for it. But once you get the guard rails set to the right length, and then you bend them out to the right angles, and you do the same nice little trick and file off that edge, and so it sort of has a nice rounded corner, so when the wheels hit it, everything goes in nicely. Now my frog jig was finally done printing, so I could take the two pieces of frogs and... Uh, the, that was one of the problems with the other jig also is I did it with a normal number four frog on that frog jig from Fast Tracks. This is specifically made for this particular turnout. So the frog is a little bit better shaped because the first one I sort of had to force it. But this frog is designed specifically for the 12 inch tangential turnout. I think it's, I don't know if it's, I think it's a four and a half. I'm not really sure. In the end, I think I cut the frogs to four, but the they're soldered to the, the proper angle for this particular turnout now all the parts are made everything is essentially uh, pre-fit for what's going on I'm making sure that the stock rail fits happily you know you can force it into the jig but you want it to sit pretty much the right shape on its own and close as you can get to it and I use my little clamps to clamp everything down place in the two diverging rails and the frog rails and then it's time to make sure everything fits with a little tiny coupler. I'll put a coupler and roll it back and forth many times just to make sure everything seems to be fitting right. And then every, everything seems good. Then I can go ahead and start doing the outer rails at the very least. I keep everything put together at the same time uh, when I do the soldering except for the guardrails. And it's better to do it without the guardrails on because the guardrails really help. And I like to make the tracks work without the guardrails so that way when I do add the guardrails later it helps they should be basically you know flaw free that's certainly the goal and uh, once everything is set up again I try to always do the soldering from the rounded edge of the jig first because one is a squared edge and one is a rounded edge and when you push the soldering iron against it it tends to slide and so the square edge it should be pushed all the way to that pocket so I push everything down with the screwdriver first and then by using the solder on the round end first, it helps to push the ties so everything is down in the same position. It doesn't really matter, but it makes it cleaner and it comes out easier. When you're trying to remove this from the jig, the rounded edge acts as a nice little fulcrum so you can slip the little tiny screwdriver into it. And you want to make sure you don't solder the diverging rail into the stock rail. And that's why I pulled them out real fast to make sure everything was okay. Because I've done that before, you have to loosen everything up. It's not a big deal, but it certainly adds a... <laughs> a bit of extra work that you didn't need to do and it's not nearly as clean as if you hadn't done it in the first place so 
don't make a mistake and you don't have to fix anything that's certainly much much nicer wanted to make sure which rail because there's a couple on the ends that don't get soldered because the last one is basically for the joint and I leave that off in case I ever solder the rails permanently together between the two pieces and once the uh, one rail was on the one side was was soldered on you know the other side's essentially in, in permanent position but at the same token I want to make sure everything seems right check it with the coupler use the triple gauges again fast track uh, three point triangle gauges hold all the rails in place I hit it with a little bit of solder and then I push down on the gauge for a secondary thing and the first is just sort of to get the solder in the right place and then I push down on the rail to get the solder to flow nicely uh, people still say I use too much solder but I don't know I don't think it hurts anything to have them extra than not it's all going to get covered with ballast and paint eventually anyway so I've had these things come off with rough handling and it has to survive getting yanked out of that jig and it's not the easiest thing if it was a metal jig it would come out a lot easier so we're just trying to make sure everything fits perfectly because this is the last chance to try to adjust anything and as long as the car rolls nicely I think we're pretty much ready to go but having the first turnout fail essentially or at least not good enough I decided not to use it I wanted to make sure this one was right. Because once you put your first piece on that diverging rail, it's it's not impossible to move, but again, it's not going to be quite the same as if you did it right the first time. That's why I had a single a single solder to that one piece. Check it again, make sure it seems to work. And I'll add a single solder to the other diverging rail. Again, make sure everything seems to be working. Because at least therefore you know at this point everything worked pretty well. Because again the guardrails will take up a lot of slack if it doesn't want to work right. And then I went ahead and soldered the rest of the diverging rails all the way in. You only put a couple of them because the diverging end has to move back and forth when the, the switch is thrown. So it's again a fine line when you're designing these things. Where do you put the, the ties etc. But the turnout shape essentially designed itself. There's not much you can do on it. Now I'm putting in the frog itself as well. And so now the turnout is mostly permanent. Again, not impossible to change, but by no means something you really want to have to do if you can avoid it. And for the most part, the solder goes on the outside of the rail since the flange only runs on the inside. There's a couple spots where it's essentially impossible to do the outside and around the frog and you have to do it on the inner inner rail. And uh, we're getting almost done, you know, going through the last little solders that haven't been put on and then the guard rails are next. And at this point you're hoping it works, letting it all cool off a little bit. Didn't test it again because it should work but this point, <laughs> it is not. <laughs> It's harder to fix in many, many ways. When you're putting the guardrails in, I use a little scrap piece of tie because it's about the right thickness of the of, a, of the flange, and I use that to tack the the guardrail in place. Then I use the NRMA, the metal gauge, to make the to, to between there to push the tie into what should be or the the guardrail into what should be the proper spacing next to the tie because it should be pretty close. You know, again, that's the beauty of the gauge. It's it's a gauge for a reason. And essentially the same thing on the other side. You put a little piece of tie bed in behind the rail to keep a space to it. So you can push against it, get the glob of solder in the right place, and then put the gauge in there to make sure it fits. Check the thing with the coupler. Everything seems to fit. And this is the fun part of getting it out. The better you solder, the easier this is. I try to leverage in lots and lots of little places and then sort of push the screwdriver underneath it it kind of pops out sometimes I'll push it against the edge of the desk sort of to, to get it to flatten back out if it's if it's not uh, flat you can sort of move it on the desk and if it's not flat you have to re-flatten it and then because that last one was such a pain I went ahead and built another new set of jigs to attach the throw bars 
because you have to, uh, it, this is again another one of those critical things to the way the thing's going to operate, but the bar still has to move in the proper path for the machine to operate it. And I'm using my own system of stepper motors, which, yeah, I, I should spend more effort finishing. It worked, I've done it in testing, but uh, hopefully it'll work good enough for the system. It only has to move in a couple millimeters, and the stepper motor's pretty darn strong in comparison. And uh, the trick in some cases is, is, again, using that same tie piece, you know, you can push the one side out. Basically, the first side, you push it against the stock rail with a piece of paper in between it, because otherwise you'll solder it fast. You push it against the stock rail and solder it, hold it down strong against the tie bed, and then you move it away with that an extra piece of that same little tie we've been using multiple times, because it's, again, it's about the right spacer for a wheel. So you put that same little excess piece of uh, PCB tie board in between the rail and the diverging rail, and that gives you the gap, and then you solder the other side flush against the other rail, and that way you have the gap, and it moves back and forth, and you have a nice little gap. And the next step is, in this case, uh, you're just about ready to put the tie bed on, but you also have to gap the, uh, the frog, because at this point we have a dead short between the positive and the negative tracks, and so you have to cut both sides of the frog, so the frog itself is an island, an electronic island, isolated from all the rails, because the one side is going to be positive, the one uh, stock rail and the one diverging rail, and the one other stock rail is going to be negative and you have to switch between that if you're making if you're going straight the frog is polarized possibly positive and then negative if you're taking the diverging path so the frog has to be isolated and this is using a jeweler saw to cut through the frog on both sides of the of the frog itself cutting through the rails so you have to cut four rails i use a sacrificial piece of plastic behind it it really really helps to give the, the jeweler saw something to bite into when you're going through the tiny tiny web of the rails and uh, then I take an, an, a broken piece of jeweler saw and make sure I go all the way through that the, the gaps are nice and clean and double check everything for shorts using a, a, a multimeter there should be no connection between the two sides then assign some plyo bond uh, also get ready to put the wiring on I wire everything now before I put the the, the bottom onto it so I add a little bit of pre tanning on the on the rails where the wire is going to go and then you have a pre-tinned wire that you solder into a pre-tinned spot and they kind of go together easily still finding this to be annoying I haven't got a good system yet for it uh, it works at this point so I don't have to do it that often so I'm making it work happy enough for that you can't be too close to one of the ties because you'll mess up that solder it's another nice reason to go with the solder on the rail first because it doesn't take too much heat to get that on there so that's your positive and your negative. Make sure you're doing it the same for the whole track. Usually people put black to the back, but mine's a very small track, so on the back, you know, it's still going to be going the other direction. So red's on the outside, black's on the inside, and green is the frog, naturally. And at that point, push all the wires through the printed turnout. This is, again, my own design, the printed turnout. I find it so much easier than... I, I bought a bag of little tiny sticks that you make the turnout... Uh, faces with it's insanity I could never do that it's I'll spend a few hours on the design but it's going to get covered mostly in ballast as well so you have to make sure that the ends meet up properly because uh, there's a short and a long end and I'm using sort of a two tie overlap so that short end is determined by the tie bed so I had to mount it essentially lightly mounted on the tie bed to determine where to cut the top, the short end off and I cut off the short end. Then I give a little flange knockoff so the corners are, are go into the joiner easier because I'm still using joiners at this point. Then plyo bond in various places trying to make sure you don't glue up where the diverging rail is going to be moving back. Give that 30 minutes to dry and then 30 minutes later go ahead and join it together. Again I always use a piece of metal through the tip of the plyo bond because it globs up otherwise you stick a piece of solid wire through it it dries on that and you can twist that out and remove the dried up uh, glue that was a major pain and at that point you go ahead and dry it up put some weights on it and you got yourself a finished turnout and uh, at this point I've got this now installed in the track I still have to play with the stepper motors a bit more 
and uh, the outer rim is done. I have to finish this inner rim next and start to run some trains eventually. And uh, got a resin printer, so I've been a bit busy playing with the setup and etc. for the resin printer, trying to make cars. Because I've made cars in the past, but you know, on the regular filament printer, they're not as nice as they could be. I think it's it's hard to say which is better. And if you only had to get one, I'd probably get a filament printer because it's a much more functional part and a lot easier because you just done the print and, and you're done. I'm printing something right now if you can hear it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like it if you liked it. Check it on Thingiverse. I should be putting it up. If there's a link, then I definitely put it up. And if not, well, send me a comment. Maybe I'll send it to you or something like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check it out next time. Summer's coming again. Huh? 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 Huh?